Over here you always see a Nando's, yep. which I love Nando's. All They're wrestlers fine. love Nando's. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because we don't have it back home. Yeah. So I think like it's so, it's it's a it's a treat when you get over here, yeah. but then now it's coming it's over in the states here and there. Oh, it sucks. Yeah. It ain't the same. The mystique is gone. But yeah. it's just not good. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's oh no. Yeah. I think I think wrestlers like it too because you can eat healthy there. Just get some chicken. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I care about. Yeah. <laughs> they told me yesterday that my merchandise had arrived. Then I wake up this morning for them to tell me it wasn't there. And they just texted, I've been on the phone with them all morning while at the table, and they said it is here. So I have no idea where it is. If it shows up, I really, really hope it does. I have books for you guys. I have action figures for you guys, shirts for you guys, stuff that I've never had over here. So I hope it gets here. If it doesn't, I, uh, I live, Val, I live by a very, very good thing where if I can't control it, I can't let it bother me too much. That's, that's my motto of sorts now. I have a kid, he's 14 going on 18. He's about six foot one. The mailman was a basketball player, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Controversial. I can't, yeah, I can't, if, it, if I can't control it, I can't let it affect me. Yeah. That's a really good mentality. And I think someone that's well-traveled, you, you have to figure that out, right? Your flight's delayed, go, what can you do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up tomorrow, yeah. and life is okay. Yeah. Life is fine if I don't have my bag. See? It's great. If I don't get it back, great. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll adopt you here in the UK. You I can hang love out. you. Guys, yeah. also, goddamn arrow bars. Can we give it up for arrow bars? I love these, the <laughs> mint ones, these mint arrow bars. Whenever I get them, and whenever I find them, it's like heaven. And I, I always say to my son, oh, I'm going to bring these home for you, buddy. And they never make it home. They never do. They don't. They don't. They don't make it home because I love them so much. My back is to you guys because this stupid chair. Hello over there. Yeah. How are you? So that, that, Hi, arrow bar, that arrow bar sponsorship is making its way to you. You know it, right? Swaggle sponsored by arrow bar. Yeah, you know they're watching for sure. Oh, yeah. well, you mentioned hey, arrow, I love you. They'll Especially the mint ones, green, like me, because I'm a leprechaun. Perfect. We love you. Hashtag branding. We love it. You mentioned your I'll son. Get, I, I'll get an arrow bar tattoo. I don't care. I'm yeah. crazy. Oh, that's a challenge right now. Oh, arrow is... bar. Arrow bar. Send me that sponsorship. I'll get you tattooed on my leg. I don't care. I have many random things tattooed on me. Heck yeah. Oh, you do. Are we going to play show and tell, or is that, is that too controversial here for the morning in Manchester? That's not my OnlyFans. Yeah, it's on your, <laughs> your OnlyFans. That I haven't opened yet. Yeah. Hashtag branding. John Cena just opened one. Uh, Can we talk Rick, about this? Yes. I Hello, guys him. over there. How are you? Ricky. I follow him as Ricky. Is it Stanicky? Ricky Stanicky. R oh, my gosh. It's like, also, how about the fact that he got his Twitter, his Twitter got shut down? Because they thought it was someone hacking it. And it's really like him talking about cream pies. PG, of course. And him just taking cream pies and eating, like pies and eating them. And then like tea bags and hitting himself with tea. It's so good. It's brilliant. It's so good. Yeah. And like everyone's signing up for it just for the humor. They're thinking it might be something, but then they're loving it because of the humor of it. Yeah. And his, his humor is so funny. He's such a great actor as well. You know, not every wrestler transitions well into the acting world in Hollywood. I mean, no one has the acting skills such as myself with Leprechaun Origins. Well, there we go. You know, we're, you're multifaceted for sure. Do you have any fun Cena memories or any fun tales of John Cena? Because, by the way, he did come here for uh, a Wales Comic Con and was literally the nicest guy ever. He got up on stage and did the, um, the dance with, with one of the kids. He was great. Uh, I don't have many that can be told on a live mic, um, but he, uh, I will say this, he was the very first person to reach out to me. I talk about it in the book, uh, Life is Short and So Am I. Um, he was the very first person to reach out to me when my son was born. Wow. 3.30 a.m., he literally texted me, which is 4.30 a.m. his time, he texted me just to check in. And then he called me an hour later just to check in. He was, so when the number one guy in the wrestling world 
messages and calls you, that's a friend. Like, yeah. that's, that's a buddy, and that's, that's, that's someone who's actually a, a good human. Yeah. He definitely has one of those sterling reputations that even when you meet him, you're like, oh, he can't be that nice. It's and like, he is. Yeah, it's like Kofi. Like, Kofi, too. Yeah. Kofi Kingston. Where if someone ever says something bad about them, I'm sorry for my language, they're a piece of shit. Right. Like, yeah. It's not... You're lying, and you're not a good human. Yeah. I say that about AJ Styles. I'm like, he doesn't have off days where he's not going to be nice. He's just nice. He's just, he's just a nice a good dude. human. Yeah, for there's, sure. There's, it's very... I say it all the time, man. It's very easy to be a good human. It's incredibly hard to be a piece of shit. Tedious, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it takes, it takes effort to be a horrible person. Yeah. So to be a good human, it's actually pretty easy. Yeah, for sure. Well, you mentioned your son, and I have to ask if the wrestling bug yeah. has been... Uh, what were, would you approve if he wanted to get into the, the old squared circle? Yeah, I, uh, it's something I, I get asked about all the time. And it's, it's definitely, like, it's weird to think about. Yeah. Because I want him, I, I say to him, I say, hey, man, because that's all he cares about is wrestling. Really? It's scary. It's scary that that's his focus. It's scary that that's legitimately his passion already at 14. Wow. And it's scary because he goes to Iowa Wrestling School back home. He goes every week, and it's scary how good he is already. Wow. It's, it's, it's crazy. But I tell him, I said, I'm okay with it, but you've got to have a backup plan. That, or you've got to have a first plan. That can be your backup. Yeah. But have a first plan because this can't work out. Yeah. In all reality, he can't control if it works. Right. He can't control if he makes it. Yeah. Who knows if he's going to? He can't be the, even if he's the best on the planet, yeah. doesn't mean he's going to get on television. Yeah. So I, he's got to have a, an actual plan and an actual, like, hey, I want s to do something else as well. He's good, though, and I, I would love it. In all reality, selfishly, it would be the first uh, midget. I could say that. Again, I gave you guys the card. The first, <laughs> the first uh, midget with a second generation. Like, it's pretty, it would be pretty cool to have that. And... I don't know. It's just, it's, it's something I always think about. Like, man, if he also, also if he does it, he's going to be so much better than me. Aww. It's crazy. Aww. That's such good advice, though, to have another plan and not just focus on that. Because it is a very fickle business. Anything. Yeah. I truly feel in life, you should have a backup plan for anything. Yeah. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a basketball player or anything or a plumber, have a backup plan in case six months down the road, yeah. you don't want to do it anymore. Or it just doesn't work. Yeah. Or your body just can't handle it. Yeah. Have a backup. Yeah. Or OnlyFans. Or that, you know? Yeah, I'm just going to start <laughs> just, hit, just putting this on my chin. By gym. the way, not knocking on OnlyFans. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask, though, like you said, it's a very fickle business, and it's like, you know, right time, right place sometimes. How did your, uh, let's say, journey to stardom, how did that happen for you? How did the WWE land in your yeah. lovely lap? Yeah, so legitimately, it shouldn't have happened. And I, I, I say it and I laugh about it because it shouldn't have. Where uh, they were looking for a person of my stature to play a leprechaun. Yep. And they, Ken Kennedy, Ken Anderson, yep. put his name out there for me. And he said, hey, I have a guy. And he trained me in Green Bay back in 03. And he goes, I got a guy that's good human, can take a bump. He lied about one of those things. <laughs> God bless, but, him. bless yeah. his heart. But uh, he, uh, he, he put his name out there for me, and it worked. And they said it was going to be six months, and it was just under 10, 10 years that I was there. Yeah. Any Ken Kennedy, Ken Anderson fans in the crowd here, we love him. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get to see him at For Has the he, Love of Wrestling. He's been over here for sure, right? Yeah, Not, he comes to the UK. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he's been at For the Love of Wrestling. Who'd like to see Ken Anderson here at For the Love of Wrestling? Yeah. Yes. Well, before we get to the fan questions, I have to ask you about your podcast, Yeah, Going Postal. Let us know. If we haven't listened to it, what can we expect from your podcast? So, it's fun, man. It, I, I, going Postal is a thing that started with the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, and then we kind of branched, and now we're branching out on our own. And it started because I get fired up over 
common things that people enjoy? Toast. Toast. I fucking hate toast. Why? Why do you hate toast? I hate it. What? The hatred in this man's I eyes right it. here. I hate it. You hate toast. Going for walks. Going for walks oh, no, is know. dumb. Where are we going? You no, know? No, Thank no, you. No, sorry to interrupt. You can't just do toast and then move on. Yeah. What, what, I, he wants to know why oh, you hate toast. Oh, I'm sorry. You've eaten toast and not made a mess all over yourself? You've eaten toast and actually enjoyed it? You've eaten toast and not overcooked it and overburned it? You've eaten toast and not added something to it where you go, oh man, this peanut butter on the toast is what I really like. Or this butter on the toast is what I really like. You don't freaking like toast. You like burnt ass bread, which sucks. It sucks. It gets crumbs all over. You can't eat it without making a mess. You always have to have a plate. I don't like using a plate because then I have to do dishes. I don't like doing dishes. I have my son to do dishes. I use a paper plate, but now I'm destroying the environment because I have to eat burnt ass bread. Thank you very much. Toast sucks. All right. Now that is Sir? Yeah. Oh, you have uh, an no, argument? No, no, you I have an argument to this? I am acknowledging, sir, that you have walked into the land of the full English breakfast I was thinking, and you have converted all of us on Let's not toast. even. Let's Fair not even go sir. into that. Guys, I love this country. I love this <laughs> continent. I love everything about this place. I love the Aero Bars. Sponsor me. Uh, English breakfast. I can't. can't I can't do it. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot do it. Tomatoes, kick yeah. rocks, mushrooms, get the fuck out of here. It's the beans that throw everyone off. But you know what? I finally have done the beans on normal bread. Yeah. Not, not on toast. Not toast. Hell no. Toast doesn't absorb anything because it's burned. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't like toast. Again, Comic Con exclusive right there. Can everyone just boo toast right now? Give me a boo on toast. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you. This took an interesting turn. In all seriousness, so on your podcast, yeah. there's an entire episode dedicated to how much you so hate I toast. Always do, I always do the <laughs> hot take of the day, the hot take of the episode. Yeah. And it's, it's common things that most people enjoy yeah. or most people just like live life through yeah. and I just despise. Yeah. Going on walks, toast. Uh, Baths? Baths? That's also a very British thing. I fucking hate Taking baths. a bath. What's the point, dude? Oh, you're, one of, oh, you're just going to soak in your dirt. Right. That's smart. Yeah. What are Idiots. you doing there? Except for Idiots. just... Idiots. Yeah. I don't get it. With also, if, oh, you're going to get me going. <laughs> can we stop? Can we stop with the baths and in saying it's relaxing? No. no. You know what's relaxing? A bed. Yeah. A bed's relaxing. A, a nice not a cocktail. Hard ass, not a hard-ass tub no. with no moving water. That's not relaxing. No. no. It's weird. What are you doing there? You just sit there, right? Yeah. It's weird. It's, weird. it's stupid. Yeah. Just, and th my common phrase on the podcast and about the hot takes is just reevaluate your life. Yeah. If you like these things, yeah. you need to step back and go, man, my life sucks. Because yeah. it does. Yeah. If you like walks, if you like going, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk today. I'm going to go around the block and go nowhere. Yeah. And just walk. No, no. Go on a treadmill and watch something. Yeah. It's That's like, great. Like hiking. That's just a fancy Stupid. word for hiking, like Stupid. walking outside. Dumb. You want to go for a hike? Yeah. Nope. Not doing it. <laughs> I'm enjoying this place. I'm enjoying my day. <laughs> Tell me the whole podcast is just hot takes. Or did it you interviews be. as well? It should. I, it I would tune in for toast alone. Then, so, so besides hot takes, we we take a step back into my life and my career. Like we talked about everything from my cruiserweight championship win to this last one was about traveling as one of my people. And yes. it's, it's just, it's random things. But then also, we do interviews. I've had Kofi Kingston on. I've had Renee Paquette on. I've had oh, Ethan him. Page and Brian Myers, two of my buddies. And I, it's, it's very, like, random of how we do it. But that's what I wanted to keep. I didn't want it to be the same song and dance. Yeah. The same, how'd you get started? Who trained you? Why do you love... It's the same yeah. BS. And How'd I don't you get ever, started? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. Like, I never wanted it to be that way. And that's why I, interviews, too, I always like, hey, let's, let's do something different. Let's cover something different and about, about my kid or about the podcast. So it's always fun and different. Yes. And if you guys make sure to check that out, wherever you listen to your podcast, Going Postal with Dylan, check that out. Let's take some fan questions. By the way, guys, one rule today. We're going to make sure that everyone's respectful. 
No Vince McMahon questions. I'm going to say that one time. He's not my dad. No, yeah, we've already addressed that. Guys, he's not my dad. Other than that, have fun with it. Feel free to introduce yourself. Mr. Brooker, who we got? Um, I, I have Ryan here who, who has um, Hi, Ryan. A, a question. How do you not like toast? Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Ryan. It's, it's, it's... Ryan, you see, how old are you, Ryan? You're seven. You seem like you have a good life ahead of you. You seem like you're making good decisions, good choices in life. When you ask something like that, I now question my opinion of you. And I now question why you enjoy toast? You do. You don't have anything on it. I don't have anything on it, but it's lovely it's with just, nothing on it's it. It's not lovely. Peanut butter on it is disgusting. Doesn't like peanut butter. Security, can we please get him the fuck out of here? <laughs> Ryan, I've really enjoyed meeting you. And if I said anything else, it would be an absolute lie. You're going to buy a picture later? Yay. I'm canceling it. Oh. Give it up for Ryan, everybody. Yeah. He said it was lovely. Can we... Ryan, you don't enjoy <laughs> toast more than normal bread. You, like, you... Not happening. Nope. I'm going to enjoy my day. Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to let little Ryan with that puffy coat ruin my day. Yeah. Ryan, you've ruined my day. You what? It's going to cancel your gonna, photo. You're gonna... Listen, if I haven't got myself canceled, you're not going to do it. <laughs> good job, Ryan. Thank you so much. That good job. Coming in hot with the toast questions. But um, you practice what you preach. You, you didn't let him get to you. You stayed cool. You, pers you persevered. Yeah. yeah. My you blood pressure is real good right now. Uh -huh. Very much on the journey of personal growth, and I'm yes. here for it. Um, do you have a question over here? Anyone got a question for uh, Mr. Postel? Uh, lean in, please, sir. Come to the mic. Uh, what's your name, please? Adam. And what's your question for Dylan, sir? Well, I understand you're a huge fan of the Muppets. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, I was just wondering, like, it's usually been a big thing over here in the UK, but it usually hasn't travelled very well over to the States. So I'm wondering what's it about the Muppets has like, appealed to you? Yeah, so the Muppet stuff, I was a fan of, what, what got me into it was the Muppet Babies show, because I was a child, yeah. And the new Muppet Babies is absolutely atrocious, and I hate it, it sucks. It's, it's not them, right? It's not good. It's not them. No. no, and there's a stupid bird on it, which makes no sense. Uh... But that, I, I, I think the Muppets transfer to the U.S. just because it's so fun and fun-loving and light-hearted. I think that's why it reflected well over there. And reading the Jim Henson biography that came out, the, the book that came out a few years ago, was really a, a cool vision into his life over here and how much of a life he had over here. So it was really, really interesting. I've, I've always been a fan and... My collection literally grows by the week. Uh, Swedish Chef, let me, man, he's not even top ten to me because he's just dumb. Like he's just, he's just dumb. And I like, he's not, but also I'm intrigued by him because he has the real hands for his character, which is always cool to see how it works. When I did the, the movie, it was always so interesting to see the behind the scenes and behind the curtain stuff. So it was really, really fun. Great question, Adam. Thanks, Thank man. you. Thanks, do Adam. We, do you have a, a number one Muppet or like a top Animal. three? Animal. Animal is by far the number one. That does not surprise me. Yeah, that's by far. It was my first tattoo and it was, it was always my number one. And like when I, uh, when I, when, when I filmed the, the movie, Landon, my son, had, a, had like a really bad cold in that and he was just sick. And then he, and he was, like, missing me and all that because I was over here for a while. And so I FaceTimed him, but it was just Animal that was FaceTiming him. Oh, and so he didn't know I was calling him. He thought Animal was calling That's him. so cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. That's an amazing story. We love Animal. Uh, any thoughts on Fraggles? <laughs> <laughs> they scared me as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You, the the gor Gorks? Gor the big guys... Oh, the, yeah. yeah, those petrified me. Yeah. I was also afraid of uh, the whale in Pinocchio. Dylan Postel is afraid of the dark. 
Dylan Postel, at 38 years, at 37 years old, because I don't know how old I am, is deathly afraid of the dark. So any dark scenes in anything, cartoons, anything, still like weirdly haunt me. Like Labyrinth, which was also Jim Henson. Never seen it, still this day. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's weird looking. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a weird acid trip kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I feel same like I need travels. drugs for it. <laughs> but see, you being 37, same age as me, that's, we, we grew up on Muppet Babies. That was yes. the era. The, yeah. The, yeah. Like 10 years on us was the Muppet show. Yeah. I didn't have that. I had the Muppet Babies and then Muppets Tonight. No, no. Uh, yeah. Muppets Tonight, yeah. which was on Disney Channel. Exactly. Yes. We could talk about Muppets and Fraggles all day guys, long. I love all this. the live long day. Any more questions, guys? Just uh, raise your hand. We have one over here. Come on over, sir. Oh, this well, is Ma everyone say hi Ryan? to Maurice. Did Ryan, did Ryan get kicked out? Well, they I kicked think Ryan out. Ryan's gone. They to did take get rid of him. <laughs> Good. He's gone to take all the light bulbs out from your photo area to get an advantage. <laughs> oh, um, if he were to do that, <laughs> if he brings you toast, I'll I'm tell sorry. you what. Well, no way. Wait, wait. So, What's Maurice, up, man? Welcome, sir. What's your question for Dylan? What's your favourite moment with uh, DX and what was it like working with Shawn Michaels and Triple H doing the DX stuff? Yeah. So, my favourite part of the DX thing, so thinking, like, when they, when they told me it was happening, I was like, hell yeah, I get to work with Shawn Michaels and Triple H. This is going to be incredible. I, I you know, I, I watched them in the Attitude Era. That was my era of DX. And then, thinking about it, it was what? like... I'm X-Pac, okay, yeah. and wait, now having him here and seeing him at conventions and signings and shows, I got to be the X-Pac of that DX era. I was always in the middle doing the pyro, but the best part was when they gave me the glow sticks and I got to whip those things as hard as I could at parents that were on their cell phones. They would be on their cell phones and I'd see them in the stands and i just, as hard. Oh man, I hit so many stupid parents with their glow sticks. It was the best part of my day. But working with them, getting to do DX Pyro was an absolute dream come true. It, was, it, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Yes. Hell yeah. Great question, Maurice. I always love to see Maurice looking with like Triple H with the denim and leather and leather and yes. denim. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about that? Can we talk about how Triple H wore about 17 layers I when know. he came back? He yeah. had to be very, very warm. Right. He's very layered. And he was very jacked up at the time. Remember? January 7th. I'm the biggest Triple H fan of the world. When he came back from injury. I know, I'm psycho. You should have just seen his face. He went, geez, Val. January 7th. Yeah, his comeback. Remember they did the YouTube Beautiful Day montage? I do remember that. Bro. Can we talk about montages? Let's talk about Let's montages. Let's only talk about My it. sacrifice? I can't. Still to this day. I can't. It's my best favorite. And then I don't even need to drop my way because Limp Biscuit is the top three band of all time. Yep. Like, montages aren't a thing anymore. Then they had edema and tantric yep. and like really, really cool montages. Yeah. Remember never... Mick Foley? They had Stained, like the, the real sad song for him. That, uh, they had the Jeff Hardy one that in 02 that was really, really good. Jeff, Not Enough by yeah. Our Lady Peace. Oh. What about See, Lonely Road of Faith by Shut Kid up, Rock? we're talking here, Chris. <laughs> Brooker. Oh, let me guess. You're going to bring up another kid who shits on, or who's like a fan of toast? You're going to have to get you kicked out next. We're going to start calling him Toasty we're Chris We're talking Brooker. about montages. <laughs> <laughs> I love a montage. Yeah, Creed, my sacrifice. Yeah. I wanted to be in wrestling only from that. I was like, and I got to do it. my friends will meet again. Please play Creed, my sacrifice after this panel. We beg you. Would you mind doing one more fan question before we I let would, you go? I would not mind at all. As long as it's not Ryan. I hope he's kicked out. <laughs> he better be. If I, if I see him at the table, I'm going to give him a double birds. Can yep. you come over? Yep. Who's got one? We've let's got a question one. over here, sir. We, but let's talk about the layers again, Val. Yeah, denim he and leather. at least eight layers on top. Do you remember, now I'm saying this again as the biggest Triple H fan, my Mount Rushmore is four Triple H's, I'm just being huh. serious. Remember when he, he was in Evolution and his Evolution was that he was like straightening his hair? Yes. What was that about? <laughs> Can we talk about also when he would just tie it back all the time? Yeah. And it never looked great? If I'm being honest, he, whenever he pulled his hair back, it was always like, oh, you don't look as jacked, you look kind of thin today. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Let's just talk about Triple H for the whole and panel. And montages. Mo and montages. No, just, just not Triple toast. H montages all day. Yeah. They should. What you what's got, sweatshirt? Uh, what's your name, my friend? <laughs> Kenny. 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 What's, 
What's your question, sir? Question is, we've had so many Hall of Famers make great managers, and no doubt you'll be a Hall of Famer soon, one day you deserve to be. Yay. If you could, on the current roster, NXT, SmackDown, or Raw, have any two wrestlers be a tag team under your management, who would it be? Jesus. Uh... He's making us get serious after if, all yeah. that. Yeah, wow. Jesus. If I had to manage two on the roster, um, you know what? Let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really make it crazy. Let's go, I'm going to go AEW just because my son loves it. I'm going to go Powerhouse Hobbs and Darby because Darby is my son's Jeff Hardy. Like I have never, hell yeah, Darby Allen, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I have never, like, my son's been around this his whole life, obviously. Yeah. But I've never seen him react to someone like, Dar like, like I have with Darby. And it made me sit back and go, oh man, there's something special with, yeah. with Darby Allen. And how Darby has been, and like reaches out to me about Landon. And when we go to AEW shows, Landon will just like bolt to Darby and they'll just be talking and go, hey, he's probably got stuff to do, man. And he goes, oh, no, we're fine. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It really is a cool feeling of this is a, a larger than life star. Yeah. And, and man, the, the things he does, yeah. I text him weekly and I go, I don't know how you do this. I, yeah. I truly don't know how you do this. He is an absolute star. He deserves everything monetarily and stardom wise he's gotten and then some he's just a good human yeah. so we need uh there's a lot of good humans in wrestling and we need even more of them like darby so yes. that, that's my thing hell yeah well speaking of good humans in wrestling dylan you are one of my personal favorites and we are that. so honored to have you here any final words for your fans before you get to the autograph Guys, area fuck virgin airlines <laughs> thank you guys for real though i'm gonna be at my table if there's an opening in here and you guys ain't got anything to do, I'm coming back here for more questions to talk to you guys. Let's have some fun this weekend, for real. Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Show your appreciation for future Hall of Famer, Dylan Bostel.